So are Republicans risking yet another defeat by rushing a health care vote where there are tensions ahead of what could be even more tense tax negotiations to McClatchy senior political correspondent Katie Glick, former writer for President George W. Bush, Ned Ryan. Um, Katie, on this, I, I, I can understand why Republicans are eager to move on this again, maybe revisit something that could be a source of revenue and a baseline that would actually help in the tax cuts, I think. But uh, you, normally when you keep going back to the same well and hoping to find water, um, you, you, you can be disappointed. And, and that's been their track record. What, what, what makes them think that this one's closer? Well, no doubt that uh, there's already been a lot of disappointments for Republicans who have wanted for quite a while to see some legislative successes as it relates to repealing and replacing Obamacare. Uh, you know, certainly we're, we're still waiting to see where that final vote might even potentially be before if any sort of vote is actually brought up uh, on the Senate Do you think floor. they'll get to that point? Well, you know, certainly, as was just noted, there's a couple of senators who are being watched very closely, and they were the right. ones who ended up uh, upending the process last time. But it, what is very clear is that a lot of these Republican senators have faced enormous pushback from the conservative base uh, as they've been back home over uh, August recess. Right. You know, there's a lot of people out there who say, yeah. you know, this is something that you've been promising for seven years. You guys control the Senate, the House, the President, so you need to deliver on this. So a lot of people are really feeling the heat back home, and that is factoring into some people's uh, thinking here. Yeah, uh, I know the conservatives provide the heat to her point, Ned, but they also uh, you get the heat from the middle and the moderates who say because of their obstinance, that's their characterization, they get in the way of any constructive deal. And already we're seeing the, the seeds of that in this in this tax uh, debate here where, where Mark Meadows and a host of others are saying, no, 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 won't, won't, I don't like the way, we don't like the way this is going. Well, I mean, this, this kind of goes to my point, Neil, that when I hear the terms sweeping and comprehensive on tax reform, I just want to respond the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupids. And, you know, you look at the poll numbers, though, on tax reform, Neil, there was a poll last week that showed 70 percent of all voters thought it was a high priority or very important, and that was 63 percent of Democrats and over 85 percent of Republicans. So if you were to say there was an issue that had, you know, significant support among the American voters, it is tax reform. Again, I would hope that they would keep it simple. And I, I want four things, and I think most conservatives would be very happy with the four things of aim for a corporate tax at 15, but settle for 20, get small business cuts, and it looks like they're, the, the conversations center around about a 30 percent tax cut for small businesses, aim some tax cuts at the middle class, and it looks right now they're going to double the deduction so that the first 24000 for married couple is, is tax-free. But I know in all those examples, of the money. But in all of those examples you're just making, you don't assume anything on this health care front. That, that's not entering your equation. That would be great if they got something, but it, it's unlikely to, right? That they'll, they'll get to health care or they'll get through to they'll tax They'll get reform. to health care. Because if they get uh, to health care, the think... one benefit with that, so they say, is that it greases the skids for a little more flexibility on the tax cut thing. Well, I think that I, I do think they're going to get a vote. As Katie mentioned earlier, they've got that September 30th deadline, and there is a lot of pressure. People have said, you've been promising this for seven and a half years. It's now time to step up to the plate. I'm not crazy about the Graham Cassidy bill. At the same time, I think there's enough merit to it that we could say, okay, it's a step in the right direction. And I think a certain amount of urgency needs to be added to that, Neil, because a poll recently of Democrats on single payer showed about 70 percent of Democrats now support a single-payer approach to health care. I think Republicans should understand they have to start dismantling Obamacare or things could actually get worse. Katie, where does this all go? I mean, for Republicans, they all recognize the need to come up with something they can't, you know, let this year fritter away without any action on the tax cut thing. I'll leave aside the, the health care effort. Um, but if they don't get something done on, 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 for example, the tax cut stuff this year, they're in a heap of trouble, right? Absolutely. I've spoken with a lot of Republican strategists, a lot of Republican donors who say that there will be enormous consequences in the midterms if Republicans cannot get something done, something they, they hope fairly comprehensive done on it, tax reform. And there's already, as we were just discussing, a, quite a bit of frustration over the way that the Obamacare uh, repeal and replace efforts have gone so far. But there is actually a little bit more consensus over how to move forward on tax reform, a, a little bit more at least, just given uh, how contentious health care has been. And so there's 
is this feeling that you know so far we haven't seen people you, you know the, the Republican Congress make good on uh, the promise to repeal and replace Obamacare so they got to get something else done tax cuts uh, and tax reform looks like uh, it's a little bit more accessible perhaps and so we've seen a lot of outside groups uh, mobilizing around this issue and uh, there's a feeling that that this Congress really needs to deliver on that or there's going to be an even bigger problem when it comes to uh, motivating that conservative base uh, to turn out in the midterms all right we'll watch closely right. guys I want to thank you both